Hello everybody and welcome to some more Fighter Subscriber where you beautiful people have sent me a load of your craft. We've put them through a preliminary round and now the best 12 face a gauntlet of my own fighters which you can see here. Today we meet the 11th of those craft and we also learn the name of the third fighter to guarantee itself a place in, uh, in this season's final. So uh, yeah, let's get cracking. This is the F-15 Estol MTD by Josh, or uh, Jet Jockey Josh, as he goes by on the Discord. Um, and this is Josh's own take on the experimental research craft that was produced um, in the late 80s based on the F-15 Eagle. Josh does tend to prefer uh, real-life recreations of craft, and this is a good-looking and pretty faithful recreation of, uh, as I said, the research prototype crafter, of which only one was ever made. It's powered by two Saturn engines, it is armed with a single Vulcan cannon, four AMRAMs and eight Sidewinders, and much like its real-life counterpart, is in this, uh, this four-plane and tailplane configuration. We've taken this up for our usual test flight, and uh, yeah, this is a, a really nice craft. It's lovely to fly, it's beautifully balanced, um, there's nothing spectacular about it, but then again there's no obvious weaknesses either. It's got plenty of manoeuvrability, uh, perhaps my one point of contention would be that it's only armed with the single Vulcan cannon, but uh, I think that was more for uh, for real life accuracy than for, uh, for anything else. So yeah, a solid dependable craft, but uh, will that be enough to overcome today's challenge? Well, let's go and find out. So first up to test the metal of this craft will be my less conventional club tails. Well, let's get them into the air. And so our first fight starts and all craft start turning around, hoping to loose their first barrage of missiles. Um, those of you who watched the last video will know I was having a, a little bit of difficulty with the uh, with these vessel uh, markers here, and I don't know what it is. I haven't changed anything or installed anything. I might have installed something new, actually. But anyway, the uh, these markers seem to just automatically switch off um, as soon as I as soon as I fire up the game. Or turn off the moment I close it down. Take your pick. Anyway, Jebediah Kerman, breaking very low here. Looks like that first volley of missiles from the F-15s has not come to anything. And I think the club tails will soon get their second volley away. I think we can see that there. Jebediah, yet to do the same. I think the F-15s, by the looks of things, are heading pretty much straight away from the club tails. That does mean the club tails will be shedding missiles, shedding weight becoming more manoeuvrable and more importantly getting ever closer to um, to dispensing with all their amrams and switching switching to the sidewinders which is where things get very deadly. Jebediah though has now uh, dispensed with all of the uh, all of his radar seeking missiles radar guided missiles I should say and will now start with the uh, the very effective oh that looks like one of the club tails took a hit let's say the very eclipse uh, effective sidewinders. Shawnee Kerman. Shawnee Kerman is in a lot of trouble. Missile coming in. Just about manages to, to avoid it. Missing an awful lot down his left hand side. Looks to be easy pickings now for the F-15s and is. Valentina Kerman is missing her, wing, her air intake all slowly fall to the ground, but things are exploding all around me. One of the F-15s has gone. Rowena Kerman with a couple of sidewinders into uh, one of the F-15s. Don't look to have done anything at the moment. The uh, the F-15 must must have done just enough to uh, shake that missile, but Rowena Kerman in trouble. An F-15 on her tail now has done some damage. It's looking like this first one will probably go to the F-15. It's not a perfect victory, but um, a victory nonetheless. Rowena Kerman still with just about enough manoeuvrability. Looks like she might lose the F-15 for a second, but no. Gets a slight smattering. Nothing critically important lost at this point, it looks like. The F-15 looks to have broken off the attack for the time being. Rowena Kerman switches to, uh, switches to Sidewinders. Can she find a target, though? Comes around. Oh, it's been distracted by the F-15, the, uh... Oh no! Two of the F-15s have gone. I have missed that completely. I have been looking in completely the wrong place. It is one-on-one. Karina -on -one. Kerman. 
wasted the last of her sidewinders on that damaged F-15. As it looks like one of the F-15s is, uh, that F-15 is wasting some of its arsenal on the, uh, on the damaged club tail. And now the F-15 could be in trouble. That last club tail missing some, uh, some wing surface, some control surfaces, so won't be quite as stable as it could be. Won't find it quite as easy to line up the shot, but definitely has the advantage at the moment. I didn't see what happened to either of those F-15s. I'm assuming they're... The, uh, the first one must have been a missile kill. The next one, I'm assuming the F-15 was just damaged and flew into the ground as... Um, as Where was that going to? Weird. Anyway, Richmond Kelman trying to turn tightly. That was a risky manoeuvre. Richmond Kerman just firing off sidewinders willy-nilly. It goes into a bit of a flat spin. Having real difficulty getting this craft under control. Now just about manages it. That, um, that might have been tricky. Had he not gotten that back under control. But now has a sidewinder selected. Lock on. Oh! That is the kind of range you want to launch a Sidewinder from, and if it hits, that's the kind of damage it can do. I still have no idea what happened to two of those F-15s, but with one craft left in the sky, they do emerge victorious from a hard-fought fight. And with the last missile, it looks like, as well. Anyway, let's... Uh, Let's move on to the second fight. That imperfect victory means that the F-15s have already accrued four points, which means that they will need to win both of their next two fights and lose no more than two of their own craft in doing so. They're in with a good chance now, though, with uh, this next fight against my Panthers. Let's get this one started. And so we start with the second fight. Jebediah and co. know they need victory this time around. And they start with their first volley of Amrams. The Panthers quite slow to turn. They might not even get off a volley this time. Let's go and uh, see what they're up to. Yep, they're already just trying to avoid the, uh, avoid the salvo that's coming their way. These very nice planes. Josh does, as I mentioned earlier, tend to make... Uh, recreations of real life craft. He's uh, he's um, serves in the U.S. Navy at the moment. He's currently stationed. I can't remember. I've been told. My apologies, Josh, if you are watching. Um, I was gonna try and do this this craft last, so to give Josh the best chance of um, being back from uh, from deployment. Jebediah already starting with the sidewinders, but uh, problems with the other remaining craft meant I had to do this one first. And with the Sidewinders launch, that means we are now into the uh, the business end of this fight. That path, they're getting very close. And that missile getting very close to that panther. Something exploded. That looks like something heading for one of the panthers. That's one of the panthers blown out of the air. That explosion wasn't one of the panthers. It was... What was I looking at? It was Jebediah Kerman's F-15. Was that what I was looking at? No! Richmond Kerman! Richmond Kerman has suffered heavy damage! The F-15s need to get Valentina Kerman down and out as quickly as possible now. This Sidewinder comes in and does just that. One of the F-15s already having disappeared off of the vessel switcher though. The other one completely disabled. That's not good news for the F-15s, but they're still hanging on in there. Yet another victory for the F-15s there, but uh, they have run out of room for mistakes. To qualify for the final, this next fight has to be a victory and it has to be perfect, which is easier said than done given that they are now coming up against my most recent craft, the Red Hawks. Let's, uh, let's get this one started. We're coming up to the 8km mark then, and here we go, we need to see something maybe not spectacular but certainly very good from these F-15s. 
They start the right way, getting off that volley of missiles, but the Red Hawks getting theirs off uh, about the same time, maybe a little earlier. And everyone starts breaking low to dodge. Yeah, these F-15s, they've done the business, but only just in the last two fights, and that has, uh, that has cost them their wiggle room. The first set of uh, missiles avoided. The Red Hawks have gotten theirs away already, though, their second volley. Jebediah coming round does manage to get away a couple of Amrams. But now, uh, now has to break off and try dodging again. One of the Red Hawks seems to be leaving uh, his, um, his wingmen behind, which might be a bit of a tactical blunder when craft becomes split up. Uh, in these competitions, they tend to suffer from it. Although it doesn't look like it uh, doesn't look like the F-15s are going to be able to uh, make it count immediately. A couple more uh, Amrams going in for it, but now now Jebediah launches the Sidewinders, and that is where things that's where all bets are off. Sidewinder tracking one of the Red Hawks. Oh, and that's a hit. That is a hit. Rowena Kerman's craft is in a lot of trouble. She has launched a sidewinder of her, her own, though. This could be something of a revenge kill, a quick revenge kill. She's still got power. She's still just about able to control that craft. The sidewinder doesn't find its mark. Rowena Kerman desperately trying to get a lock on that other F-15. Oh! But it seems one of her wingmen has already done the job just before a Sidewinder comes, and that's another one of the F-15s gone. There is one remaining F healthy F-15. And Daffy Kerman now has the attention of two entirely healthy uh, Red Hawks. I think they're entirely healthy, just let me check. Wrong one. Yeah, no, no significant damage on either of those. And I'm afraid the F-15s uh, will not be going to the final. And just to confirm that, the last F-15 is blown out of the air. I can't even switch to the uh, to the debris as it swirls around towards the ground. So the F-15 not managing the three wins out of three and certainly not managing the uh, the perfect victory they needed in that last fight. Um, anyway, let's go and look at the scores. So the F-15 Estol MTD, a solid craft and a solid contender, but perhaps lacking that little bit of edge to allow it to, uh, to really dominate in some of those fights. Um, still, though, a beautifully made craft with uh, a lot of attention to detail there. If we bring up the leaderboard then, we can see that with 7 kills and 2 survivors, the F-15 currently sits on 9 points, which fittingly enough puts it in ninth, just ahead of the F-55 Imperator by virtue of having more kills to its name. Whilst it's bad news for Josh and his F-15, it is very good news for Monzania Strike and his F-54 Stubby, which has now guaranteed itself a place in this season's final. A huge thank you to Josh for this craft, I hope you're back from deployment soon and able to watch these videos and get involved with the streams, or, or if nothing else, I hope you uh, at least are able to watch this one. Uh, if you want me to fight any of your craft, entries for Season 3 are now closed, I'm afraid, although I am still doing my regular mailbag stream, so feel free to chuck me anything you have, and uh, I'll try to feature it on there. I'll, uh, I'll put the email address for that down in the description. If you've enjoyed today's video, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, getting involved with the Discord, all that kind of thing, all the details down below. Um, I will be back soon with some more Fighter Subscriber, but until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.